you said I was too white to be black and too black to be white. It's those perceptions of others that have affected how they interact with me. You, your values get questioned and you kind of push back on what you think and how you view the world based on this system that's not designed for you. Othering is the, is the concept that you, whether it's conscious or subconscious, you treat people you don't view in your community. Be willing to learn, but stand by your values. The last thing you think of when you think of dragons and dungeons are the gays. But here we are. <laughs> I represent both Dungeon and Dragon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome home, darling. Thank you. You're one of our first recipients of our Changemakers program. Mm. And instead of us just giving you all that information, you taught us so many things. Let's talk about what you do and uh, all those, those little crazy projects you get involved in. That's a big question now. I have to go super introspective. But... Um, I would describe what I do as um, predominantly storytelling. It mostly sits in the comedy genre and the comedy industry and occasionally seeps out to storytelling nights and other uh, um, art forms like that. But it's kind of about hearing people's stories and providing platforms for everyone to share their stories in a space that's kind of designed for that process and a space that is welcoming for people to share that, both as a performer and as an audience member. You have a mixed background. Mm -hmm. I remember in a previous conversation <laughs> that, uh, I'm, I'm going to say, you said I was too white to be black and too black to be white. Is that right? Did yeah, I say that so, right? So like, yeah. uh, it, that stuck with me for a while. And, and with the conversation that we are all participating on this month, this mm -hmm. very special Pride Month, where do you stand? How do you feel? Well, it's interesting, um, and I'm, I'm kind of glad that this moment's come around. I'm sad that it's very late, considering it's 2020, but I'm, I'm glad that the voices are finally being able to, like, push through and penetrate beyond kind of, like, the, the smaller, quote-unquote, protesting that's been done, and now it's kind of this worldwide issue, and it's been brought up past kind of local communities, and we've seen different communities across the globe unite and help uplift members of our black community, members of our Aboriginal community. Um, but individually, it's, it's a weird position for me because part of my identity kind of exists within the, the struggles the, on, a, on a much smaller level, but in, exist in that, that realm of you know, prejudice and um, being treated differently by police and um, having people follow you around at security and people calling security on you um, for looking like a terrorist in a public space. Like, those are things... A very fabulous terrorist, <laughs> may I add? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. But like, so there are experiences that I've identified with but kind of brushed off as a part of life. Is that because you pass as more white or and that was that you could brush it off or because well, it wasn't so often? It's interesting because... I feel with my ethnicity and the, and the way my phenotypes, my appearance looks, it depends on the user or the person who's perceiving me as what they perceive me as. So some people just think I'm white with a tan. Other people think I'm Middle Eastern. Other people think I'm from India. Other people think I'm Latino. And so it's those perceptions of others that have affected how they interact with me. Um, and that's where I think the boundaries become blurred because where I've experienced prejudice based on my um, culture and my skin colour has always been varied and it fluctuates in climates. Um, sometimes I'm, I'm privileged enough to be treated equally, other times I'm not. And it's weird with this movement to identify so strongly with some of the things spoken about. And, um, but at the same time know that I'm nowhere near experiencing the same level of prejudice and systemic racism and um, general hatred that members of our black community and members of our Aboriginal community face. For a lot of us, I'm not part of the black community, but I, the starting point, I think, is to recognise that you're privileged. Mm. And um, the second point is to find what you need to push for, as if this is a really big wall full of bricks, it's like, which brick am I gonna push to pu pull the wall down? So, 
What's in practical terms what you're doing? Generally the work I've done has always been kind of through the motivation like I wish someone could have helped me on this process and so if I get the opportunities and um, and the access to do certain things. I want to be able to bring other people up who may not get those and help those journeys faster. I always try and consider how, like the access opportunities that people have, whether it's as an audience member or as a performer, to that show. And is that inherently um, leaning towards people who are privileged or who do have certain um, access freedoms that other people don't? Um, and on a general basis, I try to always plan and think about that concept and push my own norms in terms of, as an emerging producer, what I'm taught, how you run an event and how you mm. do certain things, and to kind of push back on certain ideologies and go, well, is that the best way? Is that an inclusive way? And is that a way that's going to see more diverse voices share their stories and become part of the storytelling process mm -hmm. rather than having a gate on the community to say when they can come in and when they can't and how yeah. they participate and how they can't. What was the first moment you connected with uh, the queer community, uh, or the LGBTQ community, or the gay community, whatever you want to call it? Yeah. Uh, and what was that first moment of connection that you had a sense of pride? Yeah, it was actually fairly recently, I suppose. I, my, my, my queer development, let's say, I um, only really started when I moved to Australia in end of 2015 and so 2016 was my first Mardi Gras that I was in Sydney for and I marched in that parade and I would say that's the first time that I like actively and publicly not outed myself I suppose I was out but like participating in something that was so public and there was photos going up online and on people's social medias and they're tagging you is kind of like one of those unofficial coming out things. Yeah. People will see that you can't control where the algorithm on Instagram yeah. pops up on someone else's feed and although you may have like been, you know, you've talked to friends and family about being as part of the community, um, it's only a moment like that when it's kind of out there and it's public. Um, and so that was the first time I think I celebrated as part of the community on a, on a visible level. Um, I would say growing up, pride, like Pride and, well, I suppose the LGBTQI plus community wasn't really around where I grew up. Um, it was kind of something that was on minor segments of TV, like the campy characters on your like Carry On series from the UK or your, um, your very campy farcical storylines that I grew up watching with comedy series. It's like Keeping Up Appearances uh, with Hyacinth Bouquet and... Uh, Monty Python, which are all extremely camp yeah, yeah. from like today's lens. They were the main ways that I had to connect with the community. I didn't even know I had a name at that point. And so it wasn't really until after university and then I moved here and things became a lot more visible that it existed and that you could be a part of it. And I was at, how old was I? I was probably about 23 at that age. So considerably, like, I went to university and I was around these groups, but it never like hit me that you could be a part of it, and it wasn't this theoretical thing that you could talk about but never engage For with. For a lot of queer people, mm. um, it took a journey out of home to find home. Where are you now in that journey? Have that, has that moment of connection continued, or um, was it easy being part of the community? Was it difficult? Were the dark moments? H how did you relate? My first entered into the community, I thought it would just kind of be this very simple, oh, you're a part of it now, and you've entered into this thing, and on the other side, it's all rainbows, here's and, your and you're, here's your passport, go travel. I thought it would be kind of that simple, but once you're in a community, like any community, whether it's the LGBT community, or like a community based on a passionate interest in a novel, or whatever the community is, there's different parts of it that are more accepting than others, or that you identify more strongly with, or that um, you can communicate in the same way and it's fine and other times you seem to be a part of the same banner but you're speaking different languages. So after that initial um, entrance into the community via the parade, very grandiose entrance, um, I kind of started learning a bit more about the intersectionality of what it means to be a part of this community and kind of chunking up from that what it means to be a part of several communities that overlap at once. Um, you know, you can be queer but you can also be a queer person of colour, you can also be a 
queer person with a disability. You can also, and all these layers kind of cross over and yeah. it seems at first like it might be quite simple and it's easy to fit in. But when you chunk it down into such smaller layers, everyone's got a different fragment yeah. of that community. What is othering? Othering is the, is the concept that you, whether it's conscious or subconscious, you treat people you don't view in your community as different. And you kind of unofficially or um, intangibly create these barriers for them to engage with your communities. And you kind of keep them as like, you know, like I was saying earlier, this philosophical thing. Like, you know, I would have had an othering to the LGBT community growing up because I didn't understand it and my place and how they related and how I related. And so I felt othered and they were othered from me. Yeah. Um, so that sense of not understanding and so you leave it alone because you don't understand, you don't know how to engage with it. So it's not just the term within the gay community, it affects anyone in society. Mm -hmm. It could be just the relationships because different parts of society, not just within one community, but it makes a little bit more sense in the space of the queer community. Mm -hmm. If you were to go back in time and speak to your younger self, I know you're fairly young, but just <laughs> to, to try to go back in time, and you were going to give yourself advice, what would that be? I'd tell myself to trust in my own values a lot more. Um, I think circumstance and when you're in a system that is not geared towards supporting members of the queer community or members of, uh, or people of colour, um, you, your values get questioned and you kind of push back on what you think and how you view the world based on this system that's not designed for you. And so I kind of growing up, I had a lot of pushback on my own kind of identity um, as a queer person. So what would be the advice? The advice? Um, You're talking to your little self there and you're telling them something. Be willing to learn, but stand by your values. If you had a magic wand and you'd go ahead of time, mm -hmm. everybody loves at the magic wand. I think it's a gay joke. If you were to go ahead in time and uh, meet me here next Pride, what would you change? What would be the first thing you change? It could be something small or something really big. It could be Australian or it could be universal. I would change the way that I help support others to, to better provide for others who do not like, have the opportunity to access I do and use myself as a conduit for those voices. Yeah, I'll use what I can to provide for others. I thought you'd gonna give us the solutions to dragons <laughs> and dungeons, but you know, you've gone all philosophical on me. <laughs> AJ, thank you for coming. Thank you for Have having me. Have a great. <laughs>